Welcome to the bankbeat.biz quick takes video blog. My name is Tom Bankston. I'm the publisher of Bankbeat Magazine and the bankbeat.biz website. My guest today is John Corin, Chief Executive Officer of JMFA. John has more than 30 years of experience with government and financial services companies, and he is considered one of the leading experts on overdraft protection programs. Welcome, John. Thank you. Glad to be here. And I appreciate this opportunity to have a discussion about overdraft programs. This topic has been in the industry press quite a bit recently. Um, there have been uh, many efforts to increase regulations on overdraft programs through the years. Currently, there are a couple of bills that have been introduced, the Overdraft Protection Act by Representative Carolyn Maloney and the Stop Overdraft Profiteering Act by Senators Cory Booker and Elizabeth Warren. Are these bills different from previous efforts which have failed to generate traction? Well, ever so often there's increased scrutiny on financial services due to consumer complaints, hyped up media attention. Uh, some members of Congress are turning up the heat on overdraft programs that charge excessive fees or implement procedures that harm consumers. Uh, these latest bills, the first one has been proposed nine times previously, uh, all the way back since 2005, mostly restate what legislators have already required and regulators have already imposed on overdraft programs offered by financial institutions. While reissuing these bills give credibility to those legislators who sign on as co-sponsors for being concerned about and involved in financial institution legislation, it doesn't make it any better for consumers simply by being introduced. For example, uh, there are a few ways in which regulators have already addressed many of the issues contained in the proposed legislation. Uh, requiring overdraft fees to be reasonable and proportional. In 2010, FDIC issued supervisory guidance recommending the use of reasonable proportional uh, fees. In that same supervisory guidance of 2010, they also recommended re a review of check clearing procedures of the financial institution and any third party vendor to ensure that they operate in a manner that avoids maximizing consumer overdrafts and related fees through the clearing order. Unfortunately, when this information grabs the attention of news cycles, uh, the benefits of overdraft services are often minimized. In spite of all the recent hype, these programs continue to be very beneficial to consumers when they're faced with liquidity challenges. Yeah. And uh, motivated by a variety of factors, some financial institutions are changing the way they address overdrafts. Help us to understand how a solid overdraft program works and how it helps a community bank serve its customers. You bet. So it, it's true, a few financial institutions have been in the news about making changes to their overdraft uh, programs post COVID. However, we believe it's important for community banks to make these decisions based on what's best for their customers, not necessarily what big banks or online only ser service providers are doing. Every day, it's possible for a consumer to experience an overdraft for any number of reasons. An example might be one person on a joint checking account forgets about a $100 withdrawal in the records causing their mortgage or rent to be returned. Family goes on vacation, doesn't keep good track of everything that was spent. They come home to an unexpected expense, like a repair to the car or home. Of course, the best way to, for customers to manage their money uh, is to live in the black. But when a temporary shortfall occurs, a well-disclosed overdrive privilege program giving customers an established overdrive privilege limit can provide them the support they need. And it, it's an additional service just like options to linking a savings account to a checking account or requesting a line of credit. It's access to liquidity with convenience. And when managed correctly, the service doesn't take away from the customer relationship, it enhances it. Something else to consider um, that while some financial institutions have announced changes or shifts in, in how they are addressing the overdraft fees, most are capitalizing on the marketing value of simply stating what they've already been doing. Now, some of the news on proposed changes of these overdraft programs can be pretty sensational. What is the impact on consumers when they lose access to an overdraft program? For a great question. Uh, I'll give you a good example. So if a homeowner writes a check or, or initiates an ACH to pay a rent or mortgage and there's not enough money in the account to cover the item, the items return NSF. 
This also results in a, an additional fee from the mortgage company, but that's not all. It also could affect their credit reporting uh, ramifications like their credit score and could impact the cost of any type of lending or insurance product offered in the future. When customers have difficulty managing their checking account and they don't have access to savings account or a line of credit to cover those expenses, a fully disclosed overdraft safety net can help them avoid those long-term consequences. Yeah. Now we know that not all overdraft programs are created equally. What should a community bank look for when considering adding this service? Well, the, the people who work in community banks every day know inside and out how to provide exceptional service experience for the customers. But typically they are not aware of everything there is to know about overdraft services. Uh, with all the sensational news about legislative proposals, there's never been a better time to rely on sound advice and proven solutions to protect that institution from risk. Partnering with an overdraft program provider that's knowledgeable about all overdraft compliance regulations and is up to date on all emerging um, regulatory issues can fill that information gap and reduce the stress of the regulatory uncertainty. There's other important aspects to maintaining a program. For example, having uh, compliant processes and procedures along with comprehensive employee training, compliance tested uh, customer messaging being, while being consistent with those customers about their account status. At JAMFA, we're on top of everything that's happening with this product, not just in the regulatory or political arenas, but also in understanding how it relates to community banks' overall suite of products and shifts in the market that impact financial services. Now with loan demand quite tepid across much of the country, Many community banks are struggling to find sources of non-interest income. Talk to us about the impact an overdraft program can have on a bank's revenue. You bet. Well, it's our belief that you should offer a suite of programs, uh, certainly including a, a transparent overdraft privilege service that provides uh, customers access to their critical goods and services when they have that occasional shortfall. Commit to full disclosures and transparency and ensure that all the communication has been compliance tested to avoid customer confusion about their overdraft policies. Implementing uh, best practices that avoid potential risk to customer relationships. Good example might be avoid those item clearing procedures that maximize overdrafts and related fees. Uh, use some type of technology or program management software that supports consistent customer communication and provides analytics about usage and trends. And as always, be agile. Evaluate program data to avoid the incidental $35 cup of coffee. Now we're kind of running up against our time here, but let's close with this. Are there any other, or what other things do you think community bankers really ought to think about uh, if they're wondering if they should add this service to their suite of products? Well, I, I think it's important that they, they review what's going to happen post-COVID. Uh, I don't think anybody expected the, the COVID impact to last as long as it has, but we, we need to be uh, diligent and provide customers uh, with access to, to liquidity when they need it and support them when they are. Uh, that's the best way to, to maintain your customers that you have inside your financial institution. John, thank you very much. This has been a great conversation. My guest has been John Corrin, CEO of JMFA, a company serving financial institutions across the country. John, thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, Tom. My name is Tom Bankston. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the bankbeat.biz Quick Takes video blog.